ready for first pitch. Bunt pulled back and ball is the call. And again, welcome to Miller Park in beautiful Evanston, Illinois. Comstock starts in the stretch. Delivers outside, 2-0 and oh the count. You know, more and more of these young pitchers, Pete, now going over that stretch mm -hmm. only look. Comstock, a guy who um, has been used in relief mo for the majority of his outings so far this season. Just feels comfortable in that stretch position. And there, when nothing changes, when a runner gets on base, sometimes that can really help your rhythm as a pitcher not change either. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, things always change in sports, and especially that of baseball. Uh, some of these players working a bit quicker uh, than you may have seen in the past, but nonetheless uh, delivers another inside fastball. It's two in a row to bring the count to two and two for Jay Harry, the sophomore for the Nittany Lions. Waiting for Fontes to make his way back into right. To the count for Harry. Chopper, bounce foul. Good left-handed pickup there. <laughs> One of the Nittany Lions just, you know, throwing out the left hand. Nice crowded attendance today. Kids day on a Sunday. They get to run the bases later. Are you going to jump out there with them, Noah? I probably will not, <laughs> but hey, crazier things have happened. You never know. That was a throwaway pitch. Full count for his first batter of the afternoon. Or, or I, I wanna say afternoon, late morning. It is early afternoon for those of you Penn State fans on the East Coast, so we'll it's go exactly with that. Right. We'll it's go exactly with that. Right. Chopper, slow roll to second, throw it over to first. That's gonna be a safe infield single to start things off for the Nittany Lions is Harry as Comstock not able to get there, didn't really need to make an attempt. Trying to make a move was Bashir's, and it just, the pace of the ball, allowed runner on first. Yeah, Bashir is a player who has spent time at a lot of different positions along the diamond for Northwestern, most notably uh, a pitcher, you know, two-way type of guy who uh, has experience coming off the mound to try to make that play. So trying to make it at second now for Northwestern and unable to do so. I mean, look, Harry has a lot of speed. That's gonna be a tough play for any second baseman to make. Uh, but an important leadoff man on for Penn State. Leadoff man on, as mentioned, Pian Centino, the righty outfield out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Johnny takes a big hack for strike number one. Pian Centino is a guy who they really want to get going with the bat, hitting right in front of Matt Wood. If he can get a little bit more consistent in that two hole, not that he's been bad so far this year, but if he can get a little bit more consistent, they can really build to having runners on base most of the time for Wood. Slight lead, takes low, close call. Nonetheless, one and one for Piancentino. Yeah, you can see they're right below the knees. I think that's the right call from home plate umpire Mark Winters. Quick look over to first. We talked about the benefits of always being out of the stretch. Here is one of them. Able to hold on. Harry at first. Strong hack by Piancentino again. One and two, your count. We appreciate those, oh go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 I was just gonna say, this is an Indy Lions team that likes to run. Uh, unfortunately for them, they're not particularly good at it. Harry is two for five on the year stealing bases. If I were him, I would be very careful about attempting one against a very good defensive catcher. Chopper in the hole between short and third. Two runners on, nobody out. Good contact. So the first runner, Harry, again, infield single, decent contact, but you know, just not a lot of pace with that one. That one, strong delivery, picked up in the outfield. And nonetheless, we're here, Matt Wood, the junior, out of Pennsylvania, it has two runners on, nobody out. Real tough luck for Comstock so far. Got two ground balls, that's exactly what he wants. He's working yeah. down in the zone. He's trying to get his defense to make plays for him. It's been a very strong infield defense for Northwestern all year long. But unfortunately, that Penn State's hit him where they ain't so far. And now you've got the best hitter on the team up in a really favorable spot. Paints the outside corner for a much needed first strike. As you mentioned, it's not that Comstock has done anything wrong per se. I mean, good pitcher hits. 
uh, just uh, where the players weren't or couldn't get to on the defensive side. Oh, and one your count, short lead by Piancentino at first. And Bunt chopped foul. And I gotta say, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. You're having, you're, you're having a guy who hits 400 try to bunt two runners over here. He's the best hitter on the team. He's slugging nearly 650. This is one of the very best hitters of the Big Ten. And you're sacrificing it out in the top of the first inning against a first year pitcher who has gotta be feeling a little bit of pressure right now. If I'm Penn State, I wanna pour it on right here. I do not like that call. My only thought was maybe he was trying to get it to third baseline. Just but even still, right? Yeah. I mean, you have a chance to drive in a couple runs here with one swing of the bat. This guy this is a guy who has 12 extra base hits on the season in Matt Wood. And like I said, facing a guy in Comstock who he doesn't look particularly rattled, but has to be feeling the pressure at least a little bit with yeah. the first two runners aboard here. count runners second and third no outs infield single and that's gonna be a pop fly out of play looks like it's gonna land right behind the Hayden Clubhouse nice concession stand open for all the people today not I, I doubt they might be selling hot chocolate I don't know but with, with this weather you know don't have to worry about just staying you know warm <laughs> very nearly got our first chance to say he hit that ball all the way to Wilmette <laughs> Of course, as diehard Cats fans know, across Isabella Street here behind the stadium is Wilmette, that Evanston Wilmette border right over here. Blown outside. Seeing if he would chase. Wood didn't one and two the count. Slight lead at second. Not really holding them on. They don't need to at this point. From the stretch, Comstock rings him up. Well, much needed strikeout for the first out of the ball game. But nonetheless, you hope if you're a Northwestern fan, he's not yet. That one low and inside. Home plate ups, given the corners early well, today. And I will just say, as a catcher, you know, Santini, what Santini's doing so well is when he moves to catch an inside pitch when his target is outside or vice versa. He freezes on con on contact with the pitch. He does, he does a great job of not keeping his body moving, not keeping his arm moving after he makes that catch. Really difficult thing to do for most catchers when you're coming across the plate. And again, helped get another call on that first strike. Comstock settling in a bit. Again, it's not as if he had, you know, bad pitches for the first two batters, just good contact where they needed to be. The graduate out of Belmont, Massachusetts utility player Cole Bartles in the plate, a few inches off of the inside of the batter's box, and that one outside corner. So Comstock going inside to outside and keeping Bartles on edge. It's a one two count, one out runners. First and second, Big Ten plus. Beautiful Evanston Sunday afternoon in April. Chops it foul to the right. That will go out of play. Barl still sits at one and two. Only senior in this Penn State lineup. It's a pretty young team overall. Only six seniors or graduate uh, students on the team. And Bartles provides that fourth year punch in the middle of this order filled with juniors and sophomores. Comstock taking a long time looking at second before delivery. Shot foul behind home plate. And you can see over at second base, Jay Harry trying to time up the delivery of Comstock, seeing if he can get a read off of him. He has not varied his looks all too often with that runner on second. It would be ambitious to try to steal third here, but with one out, now's the time to, to go for it if you want to do it. And Comstock, 16 pitches so far in the first inning. Healthy amount, as you said, we don't expect him to go many innings, so the Cats trying to get the most out of him as possible. Would like to come out of this unscathed, down in the dirt, good save. Again, you talk about the confidence somebody like Comstock has to have knowing Santini's behind the dish. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just that difference in experience, right? Santini's been around for four more years <laughs> than Comstock. You know, the, truly a veteran showing the younger, the younger pitcher the ropes within this battery. And he picks up his teammate again there. Comstock still looking at second, delivers. That will uh, slice foul. Hits the net. Again, the contact has been happening, but not at a high enough level that you, you worry about, all right, Comstock's getting you know hit really hard. It, you know Things are going foul, things are going low. Well, four batters in, I don't think you can get you can get too worried regardless of how hard he's getting hit, sure. unless it's been four home runs. But uh, <laughs> Penn State certainly seems to be seeing the ball well. That ball was, that was absolutely shot out of a cannon right there. Well, I think without rain or snow, any condition's gonna be better than what uh, we've seen in the greater Evanston area these past few days. Again, yesterday switched to a double header after 32 in snow on Friday. So a 20 degree difference. Uh, really, he's gotta have these uh, hitters smiling. Two and two, still your count. Comstock still checking back to second. Delivers and hits Bartles. Right in the middle of the three. Base is now loaded, one out. So force anywhere. And coming up to bad is gonna be Steele, the designated hitter and uh, maybe not the situation you want to start with if you're Comstock as looks like He's going to have a small meeting on the mound, Noah. It looks like. How about this? I like the cleanness of both the home and away jerseys. Wearing their Sunday alternates, I guess you could say. The primary color on the top, home whites for the pants for the Wildcats, visiting grays for the Nittany Lions. We I'm just trying to get you no, as much absolutely. swag as possible, Noah. Like maybe somebody's going to run up here in the seventh inning and say, Noah, here's a Northwestern hoodie for you. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Strong hack, one and one, the count steal. The utility player out of Shelton is trying uh, to bring home at least one run with one out. Low and inside, Santini dug that one out. What I was saying though, no, is Comstock has to have a lot of confidence with Santini back there knowing, okay, even if uh, it, it's gonna hit that outside corner, I have a chance for it being called. And right there, you know, pass ball scores a run. And he's on top of it in that case, nice and low. Another low and inside. Three and one, your count. Definitely a hitter's count for Anthony Steele. Big first year on first year matchup early in this game right here. And that one high and it's going to walk home the first run of the ball game. As Harry finds himself jogging into the dugout, one nothing. Your score with one out in the first. Yeah, this is clearly not where Northwestern wants to be. Uh, still no action in the pen. It's early, obviously, but, but Comstock is on the verge of, of losing things here with the two hits, and then after a big strikeout, hit, hit batter and walk back to back. Not where you want to be. That one right over the middle of the plate. And that's big for Comstock. He had been missing with that curveball repeatedly. That's the first one I've seen him throw for a strike and he needs to be able to do that against this Penn State lineup. Josh Spiegel. Bags still jammed. Beautiful second pitch. Spiegel out of Penn Trafford High School in Jeanette, Pennsylvania, the 6'3", 206 junior. Would love to add another run for the Nittany Lions. In the top of the first, one out still. Bases loaded from the stretch. Comstock. 
Chopper to third, no tag, can they turn to Northwestern? Second over to first, wild pitch. A wild throw, excuse me. Not able to turn it over in time. Another run's going to score. And another bit of a misplay from Jay Bashir is he had a chance to turn that one. Uh, not running all that well is Spiegel uh, down the line. The Wildcats looking for the 5-4-3 and Bashir's relay was just way out of there. Like you said, a wild pitch. I mean, that thing is not particularly <laughs> close to Anthony Calarco. Gonna see it again here. And I think it's the right play over at third yep. uh, from Bianchina to go for two because they had the turn there. Yep. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because Bashir's air mail is the throw so bad, but I think they would have had the play on a good throw. would have at least been close, but a yeah, run scores. Yeah, it would have been bang, bang. Nonetheless, two runs up to two outs. Runners first and third. Outside, Santini, beautiful recovery. <laughs> Behind home plate. If you're Northwestern, you would love to get out of this inning only down two nothing. Big out to get right here. And this is that bottom of the Penn State lineup I was talking about earlier. How much can they contribute to the offense? C.J. Pitaro looks at one right over the middle from Hamilton, New Jersey. Pitaro, 6'1", 195 out of Steiner High School. Sophomore. Bats left. Throws right. Chopped up the middle into the glove of Comstock. He's going to underhand it to first base. And Comstock gets out of the inning. Two runs on three hits. How the Wildcats answer back? We'll find out in the bottom half of the first on Big Ten Plus. Hills, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, as we see that first strike port across, Miller is making the first start of his four-year Penn State career. Uh, he's appeared in nine games as a reliever this year and been pretty solid backing things up, but making a start for the first time. And again, similar situation in Northwestern. We don't expect Miller to go long. Now, if things go well, who knows how much Penn State has built him up for in terms of pitch count. But again, first career start. We expect Dealing. to see plenty of relievers in this game. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's bringing that reliever yeah. velocity out of the <laughs> gates. There's no doubt about that. Pouring it in there. Ethan O'Donnell sends that one to Will Matt. See, I'm, I'm picking up what there you're putting you go. down there. There you go. Right across Isabella over there to our <laughs> left. <laughs> O'Donnell, the sophomore out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Checks with third. And that is going to be a no call. Two and two, your count. That one high. One thing we can say is Miller works fast, Noah. They got a plane to catch this afternoon, so. Woo. Strikes him out looking. And he is heating that thing up. You and don't have a radar gun as well. <laughs> Just as I was saying, seven yeah. pitches, seven fastballs, he goes to a big sweeping breaking ball. Calarco out of Wilmette, New Trier High School, one of the Trevions. Now looking at who is going to be batting. O'Donnell already 0 for 1, Calarco, Bashirs, the other Calarco, Fontes, Pinkston, Bianchina, Livermore, and Santini, the catcher, is going to be batting number ninth. Noah, your thoughts on the lineup today for Northwestern? Look, uh, something I touched on as a potential problem for Penn State has come to fruition consistently as a problem for Northwestern at that top heaviness. Um, the, the first three batters in this lineup have been very consistent, O'Donnell, Calarco, and Bashirs. Uh, and after that, it's been sort of a who's who. Who's going to, it's sort of a who's going to have the, the breakout game today type of situation. It's can they be consistent throughout the lineup? Clarko sends it into right. Gerlot sliding to a knee, cleanly gets the leather around it and two outs. Right. Uh, that ball was crushed by Clarko, who is the first, first swing that has really caught up to the heat from Miller. We'll see if Bashirs can continue the trend. Shears out of Community School of Naples. Letter high. One and one, the count. 
Miller from an exasperated stretch. Bashir sends that one cleanly. Didn't Wasn't sure if it was gonna roll. It did not. Bartles picks it up. And at the end of one, Penn State two, Wildcats nothing. Can Penn State and Odd, we'll find out on Big Ten Plus. As Gerlot only was 0 for 20 as he takes that one for a ball. And Noah, you talked about a pregame, but uh, came out of the slump in style yesterday to keep the Nittany Lions ahead to get that second victory. Yeah, absolutely. Gave them their third and fourth runs, big insurance runs at the top of the ninth inning. I think today, Penn State looking for more than four, which is how many they got in each of the two games yesterday. And off to a good start with two in the first, but they're gonna need that consistent production throughout the lineup. And right now that starts with this bottom two, Gerlot and Cooper, if they want to get above that four run plateau. Gerlot of Blue Mountain High School in Auburn, Pennsylvania. Chops that one foul into the purple dugout. Wildcat defense pretty straight up. We'll round a little bit to the left in the infield. They have not done a whole lot of shifting through the first time through this order. Chopper to third base. Over to Calarco. And first out of the inning. Comstock able to take a sigh of relief, hitting a quick, easy out for the first one of the second. Yeah, to continue what I was going to say, against the righties, they have not done a lot of shifting. Against the lefties, the Wildcats have pretty consistently moved around um, shortstop Tony Livermore, put him up the middle. And this is a Penn State lineup that has four lefties and a switch hitter in the starting nine. So after we see that nifty little play from being Keaton one more time, once again, swung a little bit around to the right for the ninth hitter, Cooper. That one high on the take. Want to know your count, Livermore. That shading, I would say, a step or two to the right. Well, the issue with shading too much for Cooper, we already saw him squared up on, on that one. He brings a lot of speed, and he's been a light hitter so far this season. You gotta worry about the bunt. That one out of play, also heading uh, to the Hayden Clubhouse. One and one, your count for Cooper. With Comstock already at 41 pitches. Be surprised if we didn't see motion in the Northwestern bullpen soon. Cooper 5'9", freshman 195. Out of State College. Homegrown product for the Nittany Lions. The pitch coming back right over the booth. And this is a really Pennsylvania heavy team all in all. You know, coming into this particular, uh, coming into this weekend, 25 out of 26 starts have been made by Pennsylvania natives for this team. That that trend continued yesterday. We were two for two. Um, and so that brought, that brought the tally all the way up uh, to 27 out of 28. And we've mentioned this lineup full of Pennsylvania natives as well. Outside for Comstock, two and two. And Miller, of course, today makes it 28 for 29. Pittsburgh native on the bump for, for the Nittany Lions. Big state, that Pennsylvania. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it really, is. it's really two states. And the thing, the thing about Penn State, right, is, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, the, it's one of the biggest states in the, in the country mm -hmm. that doesn't have another Power 5 school within its borders. You know, there's, there's plenty of other options for college mm -hmm. within the great state of Pennsylvania, as I think Santini might have caught that off some part of his body. Um, but if you want to, if you want to go to a power conference, go play for a power conference team. There's Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and there's Penn State. Sure. And and it's a big state for just those two schools. Yeah. They do have uh, basketball powerhouse Villanova, not too far. Absolutely right. I suppose you know, it, I, you could consider the Big East a power conference <laughs> in some sports. In baseball, I would certainly not give them that designation. Sure, sure. But you can do it if you want to. For I'm other not sports. Stop you. Oh, <laughs> certainly. For, certainly for other sports. Foul again. And I suppose Temple and the American would have something to say to me as well. Although, again, I would say, you know, get a, get a little bit more depth in that conference yeah. in terms you, of you baseball. Pen? You pen always. Uh, well, the yeah, Ivy League yeah. certainly does not want to be called a power conference in terms of sports. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yes, lots of great collegiate options in the great state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, for, for the baseball front, there is uh, none better at the time than the Big Ten. Pleasure to be calling this game. And rings him up, inside corner. He looks back at the official. Not gonna change his mind. Beautiful strikeout by Comstock. It's a situation here where Cooper doesn't seem to understand how close he's standing to the plate. I mean, this ball, it's not inside. It might be high. That pitch is certainly not inside. I, I don't care how well Santini catches it. Now, I mean, that's right at the top of the zone for me. You know, the rule book zone says midpoint between yep. the armpit and the belt. That looks like it's right there. Uh, for me, that's a strike all day. It's certainly not one that I'd be complaining about if I was Cooper, but I think it's that two-seam action on that fastball. You see a beautiful off-speed pitch right there from Comstock, who seems to be starting to get into his groove here. That two-seam action on that fastball, it did run a little bit arm side, and I think that's what had Cooper out of sorts. Jay Harry one for one, infield single. That went between the pitching mound and that one going clean to first base, making the run over is Calarco. And look at that, a clean second inning. Reasons is this still a team that's under 500. This defense has really struggled all season long as Alex Calarco goes right over that one. 42 errors on the year, Peter. That's just a 960 fielding percentage for Penn State. And they've made three already this weekend. It's an issue that has cropped up in close games all season long for the Nittany Lions. And if this one stays where it is within a two or three run range, it could be the defense that makes the difference for Penn State. Alex Calarco, the lefty. Takes that one inside. Nice high stirrups with the stripes. I know, no, you're a big stirrup fan. I am a big so stirrup fan. Glad to see that for you. Calarco in general just cuts an imposing figure for a first year. The kid is huge. Oh boy. I think that one might have come up into the throat. Yeah, let's hope for Wood. Uh, for Wood. Yeah, let's hope Wood's okay. Trainer coming out. It's, how high it's gonna go. No, no, it's impossible as the yeah. catcher, right? You're getting down to block the ball. You don't know where it's gonna go. You just gotta get in front of it. And bloop, single into left, and Calarco is on. Junior, it's Miller the senior, they've been together on this team for a while. That one, pop foul and out of play. Oh, and one year count, Ruben Fontes at the plate. But what Calarco did there is exactly what Northwestern's going to need to do more of, right? This is a pitcher who has pretty overwhelming stuff in Miller. Uh, he, that fastball's getting up there. It, yeah. It's hitting that 90 mark. We're, we're seeing it out there. We don't have a radar gun, but I can tell you that with my eye radar trained gun. Eye, and it's exactly. Eye. And his breaking ball has been moving a whole heck of a lot. So you got to get the job done, get the ball in play, force this defense that has struggled this season to get you out. And that's exactly what Calarco did. He's wearing the wristband as well. Again, first start to just get his signs down from the stretch, runner on first, very short lead for Clarko Fontes out of Benita, California. Chips that one foul as well. I will say, he's not really using that wristband. My sure. man is getting the ball and he is going, I love it. You know, he's in, he's, he's, he's near Chicago, he's sealing the Mark Burley legacy out there on the mound. Oh, there you go. One of the fastest workers of all time. And he is not wasting any time himself, Miller. Gotta love it. Not even checking on the runner at first, delivering right over the middle. Strike out looking for Fontes. He's not a player who coming in, Northwestern thought, was going to necessarily be an immediate contributor, but he's shown a real ability to get on base. 446 on base percentage. The power's not there yet. You know, he's a young player. He's got a lot of speed, and he knows how to get on base. That's what you want from a guy like Pinkston uh, to really anchor the middle bottom part of this order. You can't teach the ability to draw a walk. That's, well, you that, can teach it, but true. it's difficult to teach it. When you have that good batter's eye, which Pinkston certainly has, it goes such a long way. That one outside. I had the pleasure earlier this season though, of calling a Purdue baseball game. Uh, speaking of this lovely conference of baseball, and one thing they are coached, and they made a conscious effort, is to go more in on the batter's box than in years prior and what their coaching staff was calling it, another strike called there, is courage. 
they were saying we want our players to have more courage to get closer inside because if you can get a free walk on a hit by a pitch. So a, a conscious coaching change in another team in Purdue. So uh, something to note. Well, here's something I'll say as the count immediately runs full on Pinkston. Northwestern's bottom four in the order have been hit 20 times among them. So certainly working, I'm not sure if it's as conscious necessarily, but a, a similar thing that they're trying to work with this bottom four. Absolutely. Chopper to second, they'll be able to turn two over to first, and Spiegel gets an hit in the Lions out of the inning. One hit on the board, nothing to call for. We're gonna go to the top of the third, two nothing your score on Big 10 Plus. Tino is once again up, check swing. That'll be called one and one with a strong single to the left infield last time. Yeah, something I talked about in that first inning, uh, Peter, was the inconsistency with which Comstock was locating that breaking ball. He fixed it in a big way in the second inning, and now he's coming out throwing strikes. Not falling behind in counts to these hitters, any Big Ten hitters, really, it's just so crucial. And he's gone strike one now to five guys in a row. Just a huge departure from those first couple batters. No, absolutely agreed on that. It's, you know, we, we talked about settling in and, you know, I don't want to say a rough first as that one... Bounce back. Shout out to the outstanding camera crew here this late morning. Northwestern Fateful thought it was there. It was not. One and two year count. It's a great competitive pitch on 0-2 though. I think that pitch a couple inches off the outside corner is a perfect spot. You can entice a lot of guys to go after that even if it's not breaking to that spot just because they don't want to get called out looking. That one hit hard to center, but able to trail it down cleanly is gonna be O'Donnell for the first out in the top of the third. You and I often uh, on our calls, Noah, talk about defense, and I, I think Comstock's gotta be confident in the outfield he has behind him. Yeah, Northwestern has a lot of speed around the horn in the outfield. You, you know, O'Donnell can run down a lot in the center, in, in, in the right center and left center gaps. And Pinkston in left has, has above average speed for a left fielder at this level as well. You know, uh, Fontes, Cable with the glove two and right. So. It's an outfield that has speed to burn. It's an outfield that uh, has has worked together a plenty this season, even though they're all young, um, with two first years in the corners and a sophomore up the middle. And, and that's and that's what you want in a group. Uh, Northwestern has, at times in the past couple of years, hid sort of better hitters, weaker fielders in their corner outfield spots. That's not the case this year. Wind blowing in uh, slightly, we'll say so for one of the players on either team to get one out. Gonna have to put a little bit more behind it than usual. Quite a few uh, home runs in both of yesterday's games. That you caught here as well on Big 10 Plus. One and one for Wood, 0 and one with a strikeout. Off speed, outside corner for Comstock, no runners on. Matt Wood's strikeout, by the way, back in the first, mm -hmm. was just his ninth of the season. This is a guy who's had 113 plate appearances coming into this game with just eight Ks, and Comstock set him down in a really clutch spot. It's He's shown flashes tough. all day long. And it ropes that one to right, it will stay in. Rounding first is Wood, and he will have a stand up double with one out in the third. Hitter as good as Matt Wood is not going to be kept down for more than sure. one at bat. You know, he, he got a little bit fooled, was looking off speed in his first at bat, got a fastball in the inside corner instead. On this one, he gets a pitch he likes and he drives it. This ball is hit very well into the right field corner and all of a sudden Penn State back in business. I was going to say very Tony Gwynn-like numbers where it's just contact, 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 not a lot of strikeouts. Right, Tony Gwynn-like numbers if Tony Gwynn was also the best power hitter on his team every year. <laughs> So, you know, he's hitting pretty well, I sure, think. Sure, sure. <laughs> Shout now, out I to, will uh, say, in fairness to Tony Gwynn, yeah. Big Ten pitching is a little bit different from MLB pitching. A little bit, not much. Slightly, slightly. But a little bit. Bartles up, hit by pitch, right in the number three on his back last time up. 
About seven or eight inches off the inside of the batter's box and a first strike. Now, how do you see the seven to eight inches? You got a ruler out there? I, I don't, but I, I think about foot size and shoe uh -huh. size and then the width uh, that they use for the geometric shape of the rectangle. Ah, I can keep ah. saying words until yeah, it makes exactly. sense. You know, when you said geometric, I wasn't really convinced, but then you said geometric, and I was like, oh, he knows what he's talking about. And we're now back, by the way, <laughs> to to <laughs> just, you know, quick transition. Oh, might as well. We're, we're now back to Comstock struggling a little bit more with that curveball location. He missed big time on that one. Runner on second, Comstock looks over as he did the last time a runner was in that position. And that's gonna be a pop fly to left, retreating. Pinkston going with the wind, took a few steps back, then had to pull himself back toward the infield, able to get that second out. Like you said, the wind playing mm -hmm. with that one a little bit. Absolutely. But Pinkston stayed with it. It hung up high enough that he was going to be able to run it down no matter what. Yeah, if you look at the flags on this replay, it's it's blowing right, you know, almost pointing at Pinkston in left field. But nonetheless, walking an RBI for Anthony Steele last time up. Best way to get a walk, better get an RBI. Never had to take the bat off his shoulder. Whew. Brings that one foul. Nobody warming up in the Northwestern bullpen yet that I can see. They're stretching, but they're not warming up. One thing to note, by the way, about Wood at second base, for a catcher, really runs well. Yep. Two triples this year, also has two stolen bases to go along with it. So he has speed to burn, single scores him most of the time here from Steele. Slight lead at second, held on by Livermore. Santini, beautiful play. That's got to be his fifth block of the game. I mean, they don't keep stats for catcher blocks. I think they should. Personally, I'm a little bit biased because uh, that was that was something that that I was I was I always yearned for during high school was the catcher block stat. But Santini has excelled in that category, especially with runners on second and third in this game. Saved more than one run. Low and inside on the one-one count, moving up to two and one for Steele. Very base defense in the outfield. A lot of space though along the first baseline if he decides to pull it that way. Does so. Calarco walks it over to first. And that'll get the Wildcats out of the inning. Bottom of the second we go. 2 nothing. your score on Big Ten. He's one of the two Big Ten players with 10 extra base hits. He has 11 and less than 10 strikeouts on the season. So he's still only at nine strikeouts. Yeah, but and, and actually up to 13 extra base hits now yep. to this series. Exactly, thank you. Coming into the series, thank you for that. Yeah, he has been so impressive uh, this season for Penn State. And yep. doing all that while, while backstopping this team behind the plate is just, is just remarkable. Such a huge part of this team's success. Yeah, Wood came into this weekend third in the Big Ten with batting average. But for now, I mean, this is the part of the Northwestern lineup that I mentioned how willing they've been to, to get on base, and that's been great. The walks and the hit by pitches from, from this bottom three in being Keita Livermore and Santini. But the hitting. Beautiful hit raked to right field. Strong round of second, or strong round of first to second for Bianchina. Beautiful piece of hitting there. Yeah, it's just as I was talking about how, how much they've struggled with the bats, being Keena immediately lines one into right field. So maybe I should talk more about it as Livermore comes to the plate. But Miller, you know, had seemed to be cruising through two. Uh, again, he's a reliever by trade. He's had a bunch of multi-inning uh, appearances this season for Penn State, but he has never come in as a starter while in an Indy Lions uniform. So working into his third inning, which is something he's done before this season, um, he's done this season uh, before, I should say, but 
never into the third inning of the game. We'll see how that affects things. Pop fly. Will Wood get there? And he will. So trying to be aggressive was Livermore on first pitch. Not able to deliver one out now. It couldn't have been Sean Sullivan simply because he pitched yesterday five innings. So, I mean, I suppose it could have been <laughs> if Josh Reynolds really wanted to get fired within the next week. <laughs> you don't want to run your first year out there after he just pitched five innings again the next day. I think as a, as a coach generally, you don't want to do that. I mean, Lester pitched uh, in Game 7 of the World <laughs> Series on short rest. Uh, for short rest? Cubs is it fans. no rest? Yeah. for uh, the Yeah, but after five innings, though? <laughs> and he also wasn't 18 years old when he did that. that fair. Fair point. Fair point. But no, Jack Souser, the most likely reliever to come in here for Northwestern. You know, Comstock, who settled down really well after the first inning, but we talked all game about how, you know, we're not expecting him to be in there for that long. But he's done his job through three innings so far. I mean, maybe you let him get through the order a second time, but after that, it's certainly Souser time. Pop fly, easy pickup in center for Pisantino. And Northwestern started to see the ball better. Santini got a lot uh, of good staff since 2016. He's the interim head coach. He was serving as the pitching coach up until this point. And and what an what an admi an admirable job Reynolds yeah. has done oh, this season goodness. with this team. You know, it, it really unexpected um, that he would be the head coach uh, this year. Spencer Allen stepped aside uh, in um, in the off season for personal reasons, and they promoted Reynolds. Um, to the head coach's role for this season, straight out of being a pitching coach. Um, obviously, he must have had conversations with Coach Allen. They, the two of them were very close, but can't be something that he fully expected, at least for too long coming into this season. And after a really slow start for this Northwestern team, they have turned things around in a huge fashion. You know, yeah. two and 10 to start the season. Uh, should not be understated how much they were struggling through those first three series. Agreed. And for a first year head coach to have a young team like this Northwestern squad turned around as quickly as they have turned around is so, so impressive. All the way up to 13 and 13 on the yeah. year. And starting Big Ten play three and two, just remarkable. Well, not to mention the defeats early as a power swing will send the Wildcats back into the duck out. At the end of three, in the Big Ten at Miller Park in Evanston. Huge pull side shift for Northwestern against Spiegel here. Second baseman Bashirs is practically playing, I mean, he's really playing directly behind second base over there in the infield. They are really expecting Spiegel, the big righty, to hit to the pull side virtually all the time. You know, we talked about the prowess of Wood. Spiegel has 11 extra base hits himself coming into today's action. Seven doubles, three homers, and a triple. So he is very capable of laying the lumber. Pop fly, will Santini get there? What else can you say? No words need to be said with a play like that for Santini. We talked about his prowess behind home plate, Noah, on display, full display there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tracking this ball very, very well. Shading the sun, which is in a really tough position on that specific ball for him right now. It's pretty much right above home plate as we approach high noon, of course. Really impressive play. CJ Pitaro grounded out in his last at bat, 0 for 1. From the left side. Breaks that one to second. Over to first, and a first pitch out. Two outs now. Comstock certainly making a bid to go longer than the fourth inning. I think the plan coming into this inning for Josh Reynolds was let's get him through the order twice and then we can move on from there. But he's been very efficient so far. One thing I've been super impressed with for Northwestern yeah. in this game, um, the defensive shifts have been on point. They've, they've moved the defense around a decent amount in, in the infield specifically for every hitter. And, and so far, they haven't been beat once. I mean, they're obviously playing the tendencies. They've got a great... Uh, track record of that here at Northwestern in terms of you know doing that sort of research on an opponent and knowing where they want to play the defense on the infield. Um, but it has really been successful so far in this game in terms of tendencies. Obviously, that's a bit of a luck of the draw thing. You can never be 100% successful in terms of defensive shifts, but sure. 
it's a little thing that in conference play can really make the difference because these are teams that you should know, you should have film of certainly, uh, and should be able to do little things like that for that can potentially give you an edge. Gerlot, we talked about one of the stars of the second game of the doubleheader yesterday afternoon. 0 for 1 on a ground out to start things today. And ground out to third, and that's going to be quick work. 68 pitches for Comstock, Noah. The eighth against St. Joseph's with nine. So definitely has the capability to get a lot of strikeouts in one game. As we see a first strike in this at bat. Lefty Calarco to 320 average, 14 walks, seven dingers. Surprised that they did not check that check swing. That was pretty close. Yeah, sure Wood didn't was. ask for an appeal. Interesting. All the way on the ground, a second bobbled. And two Nittany Lions run into each other, hats on the ground. And runner, Calarco, safe at first. Yeah, Morales uh, has to regain his composure, did so with the first strike. And Bashirs breaks one into left, and runners on first and second, no outs. And they have now gone back, by the way, and given. Morales does look back at second base, hops off the oh. mound, and that is a bulk. Absolutely, when he looked, didn't throw, and then hopped off of it, can't, can't pause like that. This was that, close, no. this was close to me. I mean, it was an awkward looking move, so I understand the ball call certainly, but we are gonna have an argument here, and I understand why. I'm not so sure this actually was a balk, Peter. Okay. The move looked awkward, but if you look at it again, he's going backwards to second base. He steps behind the rubber with that lead foot. Let's look at it one more time. Watch the lead foot here. You know, he slows down, but does he ever stop? before he steps behind the mound. If he never stops, that's technically not a balk. It's really, really close it was. to whether he pauses right before he puts that foot down or not. I, 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 I don't hate the call. Yeah. I don't hate it because it's an awkward looking move, yeah. but I'm not sure that by the rule book that is actually a balk. I was gonna, the comment I was gonna say, Noah, you and I are in lockstep as always. I was gonna say, I wanna see what his best move is right off the bat to keep Northwestern at bay. He kind of did it, but half did it, and I think, again, just that slight hitch, right, I think, on the right. foot that was still on the rubber as Calarco. Yeah, they'll get you on the hitch. It, again, yeah. if he paused at any point with yeah. his foot still up in the air, it is a balk. On that replay, I wasn't 100% sure. Obviously, the second base umpire, and today that is Joshua Shepis over there, is much closer and has a better angle on that than we do up here. It was certainly close. I understand the argument being made on both sides. And obviously a potentially huge call now with Alex yeah. Clarko has two runners in scoring position, although he does now have an 0-2 count instead of just the just first and second. You and I like to joke, uh, if Balk was on your bingo card, go ahead and check right. that one off for the afternoon. I can now say afternoon. Right, there we go, <laughs> pass over. And Clarko fouls that one, trying to stay alive. Not quite as climactic as the last Balk I was on the call for at this particular field, which was of course the walk-off walk Balk. Balk. By St. Peter's in the second game of that double ladder. Clarko 256, two walks, no home runs, 256 slugging percentage as well. Three RBIs, like to see him just get some contact here. Or a walk at that matter. Well, he's got a long way to go for that yeah. ladder. One. It's Morales. Just couldn't quite snap that breaking ball off the way he wanted to. Again, nice clean shot between uh, Right center would get both of those Wildcats home and tie things up. As he does exactly what I said, at least getting one. They're holding the runner at third. No, I don't often get many things right in life, as I'm told, but that one was just a really good guess. There was so much room in there, a nice clean contact. one junior from the right side that one and that's a passed ball enough to have the runner go to second 
beautiful piece of base running by the Cats for Calerico to make his way to second base, knowing that if there's any sort of errant throw, Noah, that could have been another run scored. Absolutely right, just the fourth pass ball of the season for Wood, if they do indeed give him that pass ball. But still, four, even a little bit too many for my taste. One As would not have thought that Morales would come in and have so much work to do, having such uh, experience. But still, all season. that experience, he did come in with a 450 ADRA. He has struggled at times this season. And that one is going to be pop fly to left. Should be enough to score the runner. Oh, oh he actually, no. He had to go back to third because he left early. That is a big mistake by Bashirs. Now, he did a good job of not continuing home and heading back to third, but he left way early there. Would have been called out on appeal. And what a huge spot now for the first year Pinkston. So it goes from second and third, no outs. Second and third, one out. And now if you want to tie this game up in this inning, it's down to Pinkston. And if he doesn't get it done, a lot of pressure on Bianchina. 327 slugging. I mean, do you even see it like a bunt attempt here? As a check swing hits well, off the nub of the bat. The thing with Pinkston is he's very capable of putting the ball in play. Yeah. You know, he he has he does have 12 strikeouts on the season. Um, but given this the rest of this Northwestern lineup, very strikeout heavy lineup, it's actually not that bad. And he's got a very good patience at the plate, but down 0-2, he's gonna need to Go ahead and put the ball in play as many lines are sort of half in, half out here. In at the corners. Outside corner trying to frame it, frame it was Wood. No call. One, two, your count. I was going to say they're in at the corners. Tyson Cooper's kind of half in at second. I'm not really sure what he's doing. He's like in a little bit. Double play depth almost, but there's no double play. So we'll see what happens on a ground ball over there. Pulling it up the middle, Wood checks back, and that's going to be an out for somebody. There's two runners hung up there. Northwestern can make something happen. Northwestern running home. There's now, what a rundown situation. Sprinting, sprinting. Touchdown the left thigh. I actually think Bashirs did a really excellent job base running here. Yeah, uh, that next runner home for the Wildcats. Knocks that one out of play to the right. Again, runner on second and third. And don't forget, Pinkston's got some speed there. And so if you get a uh, a good, not only a head start, they're not holding him on. If you get a good head start and a good uh, placement of a hit, that might score two. Yeah, good chance it would. Nitty line outfield, very deep in center and left. A little bit shallower in right. Strong hack, no contact from Bianchina. And just like that, Morales is at a 0 and 2 count and two outs now after what was a very dangerous start to this inning. Yeah, one pitch away from getting out of it all of a sudden. Yeah, let's see if the lefty can deliver. And he does. Penn State comes away with only allowing one run. And Coach Cooper having a few words for home plate umpire. But as you can see, uh, did not necessarily like that balk call. Yeah, he's railing against Joshua Shepis out there. He's trying to talk to him. He's being walled off by the other umpires. He's really displeased about that balk call. What I think happened there is he went inside, watched it again, and was even more mad than he was the first time after seeing the replay. Because again, we looked at the replay on our stream. I understood the call at the time, but again, we did, definitely did not see Morales clearly come to a stop or have any hitch before putting that foot down. It was just awkward more than anything else. And so I, he didn't like that Vaught call either. You know, arguably cost his team a run. Easy play to first as Clarko mits it. Take one more look at this balk from the last inning. Again, watch Morales. Awkward move back to second, but watch that front leg. Does it ever stop as he comes backwards to make this move towards second base, or does it just slow down? And it doesn't look like it stops. It just slows down. Again, that is not a balk, as long as he doesn't actually stop and as long as he actually gets that foot behind the rubber to initiate that move back to second. Yeah, I, if anything, and I'm just trying to reason uh, this situation. No, I understand if the any, call. I was yeah. going to say, if anything, maybe because the head then turned that the 
the second base official looked at the head turn, thought the body stopped. Right. You know, bang, right. bang call. Certainly. And look, th those are the toughest calls to make because it, he's he's slowing down to try to deceive the runner, right? He's he's trying to make things look weird. But uh, as, look, yeah, Javis Shear is getting a workout to start yep. this inning. A couple balls right at him uh, as Comstock continues to motor along. But, again, I, I do not think it was a balk. I think there's a, a, certainly a beef, a valid beef from Coach Rob Cooper. And meanwhile, Comstock, you know, we talked about going into the fourth inning. We were like, this man yeah. might not be long for this game. All of a sudden, he's picked up five consecutive outs on ten pitches. And only Peter. at 73 on the pitch count as that was a much higher number for a third or fourth inning. But right. now, here you are in the fifth. And all of a sudden, he's motoring. Yeah, and you have uh, two pitchers warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, Souser's still out there. And they've added a lefty, it looks like. We'll get that for you momentarily. Well, there's only one lefty out there that could be out there for Northwestern. They only have one lefty on staff. It's got to be Parker Hanks. Unless, you know, there, there's a position player who's out warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, you know, crazier things have happened, but two outs. <laughs> and Centino. And Northwestern is going to rue that missed opportunity in the bottom oh of the fourth boy. inning. That might, that might come back. Well, I mean, we'll see at the conclusion of the game. Hindsight's always 20-20. But it, right. It, it, Certainly they see. seem to be hitting Morales better than they were hitting Stephen Miller. Absolutely. I mean, Miller was, <laughs> was pure heat, four to five pitches. And all of a sudden... Comstock after rolling as the count now moves to three and zero. Oh, just like I said, Hanks yeah. and Souser. Again, it's, it's like, kind of like, easy to tell who the lefty is yeah. <laughs> when there's only one of them. It's you like know, you it checked helps. your notes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pian Santino one for two. Comstock up to seventy seven. Delivers pop fly out of play. Single to fly out for Pian Santino. Really, really interesting there, uh, on that three one pitch. He was. Swinging away all the way uh, for Penn State, even with Matt Wood on deck. Yeah, you would Tom, think they would really want to get somebody on base for him. Tommy Molsky, the 6'1 freshman out of Northern York County High School in Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. Warring up for the Lions. So action in both bullpens. Two outs, full count for Pian Centino, and he drives another one overhead. Now, Noah, we have very secure netting in front of us right now. Is that, is that, is, is that okay for you? Do you wish you can catch a pop fly? Well, you know, they used, to, they used to have the netting uh, on the backstop here just so that it went up, but sure. not over the top. And it was nice to have the ability to catch a pop fly, but I will say there's a lot of small children here in the stands yeah. below us. I like the coverage. And rings them up, sit them down as the one, the only, the pitcher Comstock for Northwestern has found a groove. Tony Livermore up to bat for Northwestern. Cooper stays in the game, so there was some question as to whether or not he'd be ejected for, uh, let's just say, his language. Uh, you know what? There was there was there was a disagreement. Yeah. There was a disagreement, and it was handled. Well, I don't want to say it was handled like adults because it involved one man screaming at another man from 90 <laughs> feet away. But it was handled in such a manner that it was handled that now it's over with. As we see Livermore squared a bunt there, couldn't get it down. But he's probably on thin ice, that's, sure. that's for sure. Inside, strike called, no swing. I like the thought of Livermore to try to bunt, put it into play. I, I'm, I'm always a proponent, excuse me, and fan no, of, of course, try, trying something different. Yeah, exactly. Get on base any way you can. And that and is not a way to get on base. High heat by Morales. And I think a little bit of confidence after getting out of that last half. I think it shows, you know, we talked about it in the open, we talked about it throughout the game, just how important this game is to these two teams, right? Yeah. These are two teams that are battling 
to get to the Big Ten tournament that are battling to be seen as factors down the stretch in Big Ten play uh, in a conference in which historically they have not been as competitive. So for both of these teams, this is a chance to make it known that they are here to play uh, with the big boys for this season. Um, and they don't want to let opportunities to win Big Ten series go to waste. I couldn't uh, agree more. Uh, again, with both teams trying to find their footing in Big Ten play, close, close pitch not called, one and two for Santini. Morales up to 23, chopper to third. Over to Spiegel in time, the lefty snags it. And you saw him loosening in the pen, so a man of many talents. Yeah, out of Plymouth, Pennsylvania, Derek Cece, the 5'8 freshman, 150. That's, that's Cece like Dylan. I can tell you're not a White Sox fan. No, I, I, I was going off the Nittany Lions uh, pronunciation guide they sent me. Oh, okay. Maybe I have it wrong. I guess I'm too used to the White Sox pronunciation. <laughs> A lot of pitching injuries for the White Sox to start this season. Yes, it, Dylan Cease is one of the only ones who hasn't been injured so far. He's done an excellent job. Did an excellent job yesterday in his first start of the season. Maybe, maybe they, maybe the, maybe Penn State saw that <laughs> and they said, "All right, Derek, your name start. Your name is five letters long. <laughs> you have the same last name spelling wise. You know, maybe you can recapture some of the magic." Sure, that game was in Detroit, not Chicago, but Fair. close enough. Uh, speaking of former Wildcats making an impression at the upper levels, I know there was uh, somebody you're familiar with, Noah, that uh, got a nice retweet from the Northwestern Wildcats uh, Twitter account. And Sean Goosenberg, as O'Donnell, lays the wood to that one. Sends it into right center, but able to get the glove on it is Gerlot. We're gonna have to delay the Sean Goosenberg anecdote. Out of Bloomington. Illinois, two and a half hours south of Evanston, outside corner called strike. And Owen won the count to start things off in this half inning. To close the book on Comstock, five innings, three hits, two runs, two earned, one walk, three Ks. And considering that both of those runs and two of the three hits were in the first five batters of the first inning, he settled down really, really nicely through those last four innings. They uh, get to that in a second. Slow bouncer to first, running over. Souser gets on the base. Out number one for the Wildcats. But not to say things were dicey off the beginning for him, uh, being Comstock, but uh, it wasn't easy going in that first inning. And the right. next thing you know, he, he cruised through the next few. It certainly looked like things could have gotten ugly in a hurry. As we see Wood. As we have Cole Bartles. Up to bat, 0-1 hit by pitch, and a fly out, some more action in the bullpen. Yeah, Hank's continuing to warm for Northwestern, and he's being joined by Kellen Pate out there for the Wildcats. And as Bartles watches one, just to get back to our Sean Goosenberg yes. anecdote, he would have been on this team this year. He foregoed his last year of eligibility in a Northwestern uniform because he was drafted by the yeah. White Sox in the 19th round. And Goosenberg, uh, whose bat was so consistent throughout his his time in the big t his, his time with Northwestern against Big Ten pitching, has already shown that bat playing. He's worked his way all the way up to high class A at Winston Salem and hit a home run last night as a starting second baseman for the Dash. So you know we're all rooting for Sean Goosenberg uh, down in North Carolina, but in the White Sox system, local uh, local product for for the Evanston uh, product. Beautiful play in right field. As we talked about that defensive change, Pinkston now in right and Rustich in left. Steele 0 for 1, the walk ground out and an RBI in his time up. Again, had that RBI on the walk in his first time up to bat. Two outs, one ball, and one and one will now be the count. Gotta love when they slip in that defensive shift and, uh, and the results yield that. Exactly, exactly. Beautiful foresight. Uh, 
second base. That's another strike. The Shears. Step and a half into the outfield grass. You know, it's kind of funny, Peter. Bashirs is Northwestern's pitcher position player, and he's playing second base. And Cease is a pitcher position player for Penn State, and he played second base yesterday. So a couple of second basemen who moonlight on the mound for these two teams. It's not the position you would necessarily think would be the place That's true. that you would moonlight as a pitcher. I've seen a lot of pitcher first baseman, sure. maybe a pitcher corner outfielder. I have not seen a ton of pitcher middle infielders. No, you're correct with that. Low and outside. As Steele brings the count full. Miller Park, win coming in. Full count, 2-1, your score. Penn State would like to add some insurance. Not able to do so there. Sitting him down in a clean inning is Souser for the Cats. No, what do you got on Tommy? Molsky was a starter for the first couple weekends for this Nittany Lions team. He's made seven starts on the season, but struggled a little bit in that starting rotation. You see the 0-4 record, the 5.79 ERA, and was really hurt by his defense. Allowed 30 runs, only 18 of them earned so far this season for Molsky. So they move him to the bullpen roll, only his second appearance out of the bullpen of his young career, and hope that that can work a little bit better for the hard-throwing righty. It's going out of play. Just talking about some of the players for Northwestern that have gone on to play at the next level. As that one hits square, I believe, right above the right knee for Anthony Calarco. As Calarco is not one who wears a shin guard either, so. Inside Cannot have felt well. good. Yeah, some Nittany Lion news. Uh, they have two players in AAA right now. Eric Mock, the pitcher is uh, in the Cleveland Guardians organization of Columbus. And Jim Haley, the third baseman, who ended his uh, career at PSU in 2016, is part of the Durham Bulls organization. So two players in AAA for them. Northwestern, outside of Jack Dunn in AA with the Harrisburg Senators, I do not believe has anybody in, in AAA in the minor leagues. That one inside, they're gonna call that one a strike, it was close. And we're really at a critical period here. Yeah. Bottom of the sixth inning, one on, nobody out for the middle of this Northwestern order. This is the time for the Wildcats to make some hay. As you can see, a lot of movement from Wood, but it did look like that pitch caught the inside corner. And Bashirs sends it to the left. And that one goes into the bullpen. Well, let's not forget the Joe Girardi had a little bit of affiliation. It's uh, eight hit by pitches so far on the season for Molsky. Uh, that's a lot. Absolutely, <laughs> more more than you want, certainly if you're if you're a pitcher. And he has had the ball getting away from him plenty this year. 13 walks to go along with those eight hit by pitches. He's allowed three. The stroke of a bat, he can give Northwestern a lead. Goes and chases that one. Thought he held back, he did not. And that'll be an out to make some contact. Chase that one, and that's gonna be a pop fly. Wind circling it back. Getting a clean mitt on it was Harry. And just like that, two outs. Home things down after the leadoff hit by pitch. Doing a great job of staying within himself. Huge at bat for Steven Rustich, who started out this season as, a, as an everyday starter for this Northwestern Wildcat team and has fallen out of the lineup over these past couple weeks, but finds himself in in a crucial spot here. That went inside. That was called before, not called there. Rustich confirms with ump. 2 and 0 oh, your count. Rustich would like to earn more playing time. Nice base knock would be a good step in that. Contact again. Rustich never lacked for power. Sure. Led all first years in the conference in home runs last season. It's already has three this year, even in more limited playing time. It's the consistency of that power that has been the issue. 
very slight lead at first. Rustich, check swing, he went, knew he did. That slider is really diving yeah. away from these right hand hitters from Molsky, but still Northwestern has got to do a little bit of a better job of recognizing it out of the hand. This pitch is more than a foot outside by the time it gets to the glove. Geometrically speaking. Oh, and they caught him again. Two check swings in a row. He's going to sit Rustich down. Spiegel at the plate. Utility player out of Jeanette, Pennsylvania. One run lead for the Nittany Lions. Takes outside. Close games yesterday. No, and we're getting another one here today. And it's surprising because before this weekend, the Northwestern offense had just been pouring it on with multiple 10 run plus games in a row. Yeah, absolutely. The Wildcats had come in to this series actually having scored seven or more runs in eight consecutive games. They were really firing on all cylinders offensively. It's Penn State's hit pitching staff, which has struggled at points this season, and this Penn State defense, which has struggled for most of the season, have done enough to keep the Wildcat bats down. Yeah, we talked about uh, they won 7-6 versus Indiana, then 13-6. They also won their midweek game just a few days ago against the Flames of UIC 13-3, and that's not a team to, you know, Take a second glance at UIC's got a good squad in their conference as well. Changing conferences next year, but that's <laughs> a story for a different day. Right. Beautiful cross of the plate. Yeah, you talked about uh, his unique angle. It's not high, it's not low, it's kind of just mid range there. Souser sweeping across. I mean, he's using that frame to his advantage. He can really get that ball out wide and then bring it back across the plate. Difficult look for a right handed hitter. Out into center and getting to it nice and clean for Northwestern was O'Donnell. Souser working into his second inning here. He's already gone through an inning and a third. He only had two and a third total innings of work on the season coming into today, but he's been so clean through four outs, you know, why make the move to another pitcher? And we talked about it for both pitchers so far for Northwestern Comstock. Once uh, things settle down, I mean, Zeros on the board for the Penn State offense since that first inning. That one's going to be a bit low. 16 pitches for Souser. Strong swing, no contact. Pitara's been left on base two times for Penn State. So the most familiar with the base paths. Went a bit low. Still double barreled action in the Wildcat bullpen. Just in case. I think if Sazer puts somebody on, he might be done. Wood with a double and two RBIs for Spiegel and Steele is what has been the offense for the Nittany Lions this afternoon. Three runners left on base. It's still only seven hits total for both of these teams as we work into the seventh inning. Since the first couple innings, the bats have really been quiet both ways. Quick delivery. Livermore. Clarko. Out number two. Clean infield play by the Wildcats this afternoon. I don't want to jinx it now as after I say that, but it's been a very clean, crisp infield. Yeah, slight bobble here from Livermore, but that ball was hit hard enough that he had plenty of time, and the defense certainly has been solid for the Wildcats so far today. Billy Gerlot Up to bat. That one outside. 
Gerlot, two at bats and nothing to save for it. And again, it was an 0 for 20 slump before yesterday, so. We mentioned it. he was 0 for 21 before 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 the hit yesterday. He was 2 for 26 coming into today. And uh, oh boy, he wanted to send that one back to Happy Valley. Yeah, there you say, I was saying <laughs> it's in that general direction. There you go. There you go. I'll do the geometry, you do the geography. We got two courses down, and that one's inside off speed. Kisses the corner. Erlob just looks lost up there. Uh, you know, two for 28 is two for 28 at a certain point. And uh, I'm sure he plays a great out, a great corner outfield. But right now, he does not look himself at the plate. Might be a circumstance where, you know, maybe you switch far outside and maybe swap as a defensive replacement or you just want, want to ride it and you're saying, okay, you know, you're, you're the bottom of our near or at the bottom of our lineup. We'll wait till you get out of it and make your contact, but whatever it is, yeah. so far it's not working. Rested on shoulder, kick, sends it to center. Now having to take just a few steps back as O'Donnell snags the pop fly. And just like that, Northwestern has their chance to tie this one up, Gerlot. 0 for 3 now on the early afternoon. Wildcats just nine outs to play with, but their pitching has been excellent all day long. Since a two run first and any lines have been shut down, can the Wildcat bats make a difference though, Peter? On the 19th against UAB, Notch's first career hit against them on the 20th. He went three for three with a double against Santa Clara on the 27th of February. Now here 0 and 2 with a fielder's choice and would like to get on the base paths for the Cats. Yeah, Northwestern needs to get something cooking. Bats have been quiet, and after that initial hit batter from Calarco, we've really seen Molsky calm down here. Molsky inside. Thought he was gonna get the call, did not. Close call. Great job by our camera crew, as always. I know. Uh, it's going to be Chuck Ball. But again, always the unsung heroes of the broadcast, the producers, the directors, the audio engineers. We're uh, very lucky to be working with this crew today, Noah. Yeah, absolutely. They do great work. They do great work up here in Evanston. Everybody involved. Two and two. Pinkston. Trying to find a pitch he likes. That wasn't one of them, but good take. He has worked deep into the count all three times he's been at the plate in this game. Did a great job watching that one up high. That hits the dirt, and Pinkston will have the free pass to first base. Jock with shortstop Harry. Uh, there is that hit up the middle as we talked about, but able to get there. And I gotta say, I like that. I like that play from Molsky a lot, right? He looks yeah. back at second and he sees that Pinkston is off the base. He could get him in a rundown, but is he? Long look by Molsky. Cooper retreats. Santini takes it. 14 walks, nine RBIs, and two home runs for Santini. Again, win, the wind not in his favor, but again, plenty of space in the outfield. It's another situation for Northwestern as Santini takes. Wow, I thought that was going to be called a strike. Um, a situation for Northwestern that's that's very difficult because Santini is a great defensive catcher. We've talked about it all game long, right? But the bat isn't quite there. He's a 167 hitter. He's the definition of a glove first catcher. So they've opted to not pinch hit for him, but it's a tough situation because if you pinch hit for him, obviously you lose your best defender, but it's a big spot to have a guy who's only hitting 167 up with the game potentially on the line here. Yeah. There's always trade-offs, right? There are, there are. And not to go, uh, you know, 
early 2000s Cubs, very Paul Bacco-esque numbers. You know, you say not to go, and I don't believe you. <laughs> I, think you I think it was to go. It was. It was to go. Well, again, Paul Bacco is the defensive replacement uh, at the catcher position behind Damian Miller on that 03 Cubs squad. Just to reference Major League. Uh, 167. The delivery outside. Good walk. 15th now for J.C. Santini. The Two ducks on the pond. But, but here, Penn State charging him with getting out of a jam. Well, not only that, uh, because of that long roll, I would not be surprised to see if they stick with him maybe if it gets out of this for the remainder of the game. I think I'd be surprised to not see Jaden Henline get onto the mound at some point in this game for Fair. Penn State, but we'll see. He got a tough call on that first pitch. Did him a lot. That outside, he gets the call he wants wow. there. Wow. I would have traded those two pitches. <laughs> one and one. He ranks fourth all time in Penn State history with 13 career saves. Tied seventh all time with Greg Young with 67 appearances. Greg Young in the 87 to 90 season for the Nittany Lions. And that, and that second pitch was high, by yeah. the way. And it's put O'Donnell in a bad position here as he now has to foul that one off to, to run the count to one and two. You know, a 330 hitter, despite being over three today, he's very capable with two strikes, is O'Donnell, but not the position he wants to be in. I'm sure the Nittany, or excuse me, we'll wait for that outside pitch. I was gonna say, I'm sure if you're a Nittany Lion fan, you'd love for it just to be done with and one more pitch, but nonetheless, a lot of people here today, part of the Wildcat faithful that would love a nice, uh, nice moon shot toward Welsh Ryan Arena. Thought about it there. Slow roller, bobble. I don't think there was going to be a play. Base. Anthony Clark alone inside. You know, in the first inning, Penn State got a run on a walk. Why not? Why not return the favor? It's very hopeful of you, Peter. Yeah, I respect <laughs> it. Inside. Pass first base. And Penn State way swung around to the right, by the way. Just going to say that. field defense we see, and we've seen teams shift Calarco all year. They shifted him a lot last year as well. Um, a guy who is a very heavy pull side hitter. And so Jay Harry is all the way on the first base side of second. And that one outside, he was trying to get him to push. I mean, that that's now... That, that is now a Yankee Anthony Rizzo style defensive shift. As Malat. There's another pull. Clarko with the 2 2 count now. He's a, he's a willing strikeout victim. 32 Ks on the year is the most of any Northwestern player. And if you're Malat here, you have to be going for the put away pitch. Yeah. You can't be worried about potentially walking him on 2-2. Two -two. You've got to throw something that he's going to chase. Inside, no call. Northwestern on their feet. Runners will be going. Bags jam, full count. Two outs. Calarco, this is your moment to break things open for the Wildcats, unless Malat has something else to say in the stretch. Fouled it. With the outfield as deep as it is and really pinched in right center as well, any base hit here is certainly scoring two with the runners going and honestly might even score three depending on how quickly O'Donnell's moving from first. I mean, as you mentioned, with such a defensive alignment specific for Calarco. Slight step out of the batter's box in the lefty, Calarco. And Malat, no ball called. I was gonna say, if I'm Mason Malat, I would not be confident about going to that move given what we saw happen earlier in this game, in this particular situation. I guess he just really didn't like the pitch call. 
Fans on their feet, Miller Park, the delivery down first base, just fine. Wow, I am not sure about that. The last hop that ball took was in fair territory. It may have crossed foul on the bag. Oh boy. Ooh, I wow. think runners will go. Calarco, can he deliver? Outside, he delivers as I jested, but nonetheless, a run. Pinkston scores. Jay Bashir's base alignment. Takes that one right down the middle. It's a good take from Bashir's. A lot has been struggling to consistently locate in this inning. Whole new ball game. Two, two, five hits for the Cats. A walk scored a run. Base is still loaded. Outside on the delivery by Malott. He grimaced after that one, possibly just in frustration. Looks to the bench, looks to the wrist to watch. Bashirs. Takes low. That was a close call. Yeah, working hard, almost too hard as Matt Wood on that one. Very clearly brought the ball upwards. Sometimes that's not the best strategy. All three cats, generous leads. Bashir chops it up the middle. Should be an easy play at two. It is for Cooper. into a game the Northwestern's pitchers have absolutely dominated ever since the first inning. You know, back in that first inning, as an aggressive swing from Cooper sent him to the ground, back in that first inning, Harry and Piacentino went back-to-back -back singles to start the game. Since those two singles, Peter, it's been seven innings of one-hit baseball for the Northwestern Wildcats pitching staff, and that lone hit was the double back in the third for Matt Wood. Outside of the big slugger, mm -hmm. no other Penn State player has hit safely since the first two batters of the very first inning of this game. Yeah, that's, uh, again, that defensive prowess of the Cats, one of the strengths of this program. That one low and outside. Again, they are 500 on the year, 13-13, looking for a win, 14, and the series victory. Cooper going 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Love to get something in play. Two and one. Beautiful pitch. Cooper knew that uh, he, he patted himself on the chest after that one, it knew that was his. When this Wildcat bullpen gets in trouble, it's when they're walking guys. And Souser did a great job of throwing strikes. He came in, six up, six down, and Hank so far has got back to two and two, and now goes back to three and two. This is what they cannot afford in this situation for Northwestern. It's putting runners on for free because eventually you're gonna to get to the bat of wood in the middle of that order, and you're not gonna like it if you, if you let guys on with free passes before that point. From the stretch, Hanks, pitch number six, and the delivery. Swung through it, no contact. Cooper sitting down, big K for Hanks. Harry. No batting gloves, no wrist guards. No Under Armour, no nothing. No nothing. No He's got stirps. a wristband on, you Does, know. It? It's, it's red. Oh. But I think oh, that's yeah, just for I, fun. Hey, maybe it's a ponytail. He's got a little bit of hair back there. Jay Harry, one for three, single, ground out, line out, and a run. Lefty on lefty. Calls for the bunt, actually gets hit as he pulls it back. That would have hit him regardless. Yeah, it almost would have gone behind him had he not squared. Uh, that, that was well offline from Parkour Hanks. And there's that free pass I was worried about, Pierre. Put a runner on for the middle of this order. Yeah, yeah as we like, yeah, you called it. I mean, he's in regular position. He would have had to jump forward to get away from it. And meeting on the mound one and three is 
And he is Centino. They're going to go ahead and make a move here. And more pressingly, eight walks in nine and a third innings to go along with 12 strikeouts. 5'9 junior out of the, the John Cooper High School. 1-0 oh the count, single flyout and strikeout. 1-3 is Pia Centino. Strong hack through that one. He that, wanted all of it and more. That's what I'm talking about with Smith. That breaking stuff is really, really nice. It's just about whether he can get hitters to go for it when it's out of the zone. Short lead at first, Smith. Piancentino, ground ball the third. Swinging it around, double play. Out of the jam are the Wildcats. Beautiful way to turn to, Noah. Yeah, that's how you get two outs the easy way. Reed Smith, third pitch. Two hopper to third, and this Northwestern infield continues to be sparkling defensively. Excellent turn over at second for Bashirs. Absolutely, four, five, six. This has been an intriguing part of the order today. Alice Calarco with a couple hits already. And then going down to the six, seven, eight part of the order, which is what prompted that rally last inning. Yeah. We talk about good base running ever since the mishap at third. Again, we say we hope for, if you're a Northwestern fan, doesn't come back to haunt you. At least you're tied right now, so. Right, I mean, it's haunting you if, if you can't get any runs in these sure. next two innings, but. Either way, they've they've certainly bounced back admirably. A huge part of that, of course, has been the staff on the pitching mound, which oh, continues to just goodness. excel. The lot, 14th pitch. Make that 15, that's a ball. I mean, the thing is, you look at the guys who have pitched for Northwestern today, right? Comstock, yeah. Souser, Hanks, and now Smith. These are four guys who have struggled for much of this season. All yeah. four come in with an ERA over five, and all four have done a phenomenal job today. You just have to give credit to the Northwestern pitching staff, the back end of which has been uh, questionable all season and has come through in a really huge game so far and now it's the, the bats turn to hold it up. Inside low. Good take for Clark a full count. Cats trying to get their lead off. Runner on. And he swings all the way through that. After his big brother Anthony had the big walk last inning. Alex cannot quite follow it up. Average, trying to boost it, is Rustich. There's a defensive replacement as well in left field. That inside as well, so two takes to start off the at-bat. Rustich is a guy who can move a little bit better than you might expect for somebody his size. Mm -hmm. Not a guy you necessarily want to put on base. Of course, if you're Penn State at this stage, you don't want to put anybody on base. <laughs> fair, so. fair. A little bit of a quicker base runner than a Calarco. Either one of them. Pulls it foul. Pinkston on deck. Pinkston would love to have a runner on to press the defense of the Nittany Lions. Nonetheless, 2-2 two -two your count. Rustich pulls that one foul as well. Seen some good contact so far. Malat not shying away. Absolutely, he's going right after these hitters. You know, we've mentioned the free passes today for both teams have been what's caused the runs, right? Correct. Last inning, that was the, the death knell for the Nittany Lions. That's gonna be a pop fly to Cooper. Oh, actually, it's like a defensive substitution, my apologies. In for the Nittany Lions is 
uh, Derek Cease at second base. So Cease was warming up in the bullpen. Yep. Comes out to play second base instead. Although Cooper did take his last at bat, so he is truly a defensive replacement. And makes the play on that pop-up. It's down to Pinkston. Pinkston lines back, tests Cease again. Cease to the ground over to first base. Spiegel. And uh, that is uh, gonna be a quick work for Malott. Pete No in the booth. Ninth inning, Smith on the mound. The young Northwestern faithful, you can hear him. It's Kids Sunday cheering on their Big Ten favorite Northwestern as Matt Wood, the junior, would like to have something to say about those cheers. I talked a lot about not pitching around people in this game. Uh, it all goes out the well, uh, uh, window when Matt Wood is at the plate. <laughs> this is a time when, you know, the dreaded leadoff walk is dreaded for a reason, but yeah. if you're ever gonna walk somebody leadoff, it would be Matt Wood. Yeah, Matt. Don't, you cannot be too careful on the 2-0. Matt Wood, big hack. And that was a great job by Smith, right? Didn't go to the, the four-seam fastball right down the pipe that Matt Wood might have been expecting. Took a huge hack at it and just disappeared underneath his bat. The Shears shift into right field. Huge hole between him and shortstop. And line shot to Livermore. He has to pull back a bit and out nonetheless. First out of the ninth inning for the Cats. And that's why there was a huge hole between second and shortstop. Once again, Northwestern has it shifted perfectly. Livermore wow. exactly where he needed to be. Opinions aside on the thought of the shift. Which technically that wasn't a shift, we should know. Sure, sure. Two, two infielders right. on each side you're of the right. base. You're right, you're right. Adjustment. <laughs> right. It was a beautiful adjustment. Exactly. No, but yeah, exactly. Cole Bartles, 0-2, hit by pitch and a fly out. One out and Smith continues as base and alignment, as you're gonna see. Beshares just about a step into the grass. Out to center field, backing up, backing up on the warning track is O'Donnell. The wind helped the Cats on that, and now two outs. Yeah, on a different day, it's three to two. A lot of that one was, <laughs> was gotten a hold of. Well, the Wildcats catch a break. O'Donnell does well to track it all the way. And it's just a, some warning track power instead of a three to two ball. Yeah, Bartles uh, coiled that back and delivered. Anthony Steele now. Nittany Lions have not had much success since his RBI walk in the first. Good shot into left field. First hit since the third inning for Penn State. All the way till the ninth. Six innings without a hit until that one by Anthony Steele. Anthony Steele now on first. Be intriguing to see how Smith handles Spiegel. It'll be intriguing to see how the Let's Go Wildcats chants continue. <laughs> Ever since you mentioned them, they have not stopped. They have not. That's dedication to your team right there. Gotta love it. I think the, the, the fans know that the quicker the outs for Penn State and the possible victory. Oh, another shot in the left. That's two to almost the same area as Spiegel gets on. Two hits in a row after none since the third. Runners at first and second, so one in scoring position now as Pitaro. No hits on the day, 0 for 3, two ground outs. The go-ahead run in scoring position for Pitaro and still no action in the Wildcat bullpen. It's Reed Smith's game to win or lose right here in the ninth inning. Smith from the stretch. Does a quick look at second. Delivers. Same spot. They're sending him home. There will be a throw. Play at the plate. Easy out for the Wildcats. What a dime in left field by Rustich. He's hyped up. Let's go, Cats. Noah, what a fire. 
Great throw by Rustage. This is one of the worst sends I've ever seen in my life, Peter. He's out by 45 feet. I don't understand. The pole plays in front of him. Look at how much he's out by. He, I mean, I, 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 I do not understand the thought process here. He's sending him all the way, and the throw beats him by a half a mile. Nonetheless, Wildcats now a chance to win in the bottom of the ninth. Pitch one out here for Bianchina. Um, even even if there was an absolute burner out there, yeah. as Brandon Franks was in as, as a pinch runner, but even if there's an absolute burner out there, a ball hit that hard, he's just not going to score a runner from second base. Unless right to Santini was able to get the out. And that's going to be a first pitch strike for Livermore. Malat still in the game. So a lot of faith for the Nittany Lions to send this one to extras, keeping the lot out there. Check swing strike. I mean, from a Penn State perspective, Milan is cooking, right? There's no reason to bring yeah. somebody in at this point. He, he pitched very a very clean eighth inning. You know he can go multiple innings. He's a fifth year player in your program. You gotta give him the green light, get, keep him going. Ouch. That bounces a few feet in front of home plate. One and two year count, Tony Livermore. And if the Wildcats could just get this inning back to the top of the order, they would feel really good about it. Cats, two strikes, one ball, one out. Keeping the at bat alive is Livermore. Malat, you know, minus the situation in the bottom of the seventh, has just been cool, calm, and collected. And remember, in that bottom of the seventh inning, and a nice line shot up the middle. Well, and runner on first with one out. The winning run is on the base pass. I was going to say that. Just advanced the runner to second base, even with as good of a hitter as you as O'Donnell coming up behind. A lot. I good. mean, yeah, good move for sure. It's not a terrible idea to bunt here, but Santini is certainly capable. I don't mean to imply that he's not capable of driving in a run or getting a big hit. So I, I would I would let your your veteran catcher let, let him get a shot here. Looked bunt, pulled back. Again, my only thought process with that was since there have been some recent struggles at the plate, you know, an advanced runner might be better than a, a strikeout or a, a double play. That was the thinking going in, but nonetheless, one and oh the count, one out. Runner on first base, Katz can win in the bottom of the ninth. Nice snap over to first. Mott has a really nice snap move to first base. Absolutely. And the Wildcats would certainly think about stealing Livermore here. He's four for six on the season. Livermore had the single to center in the turf. Was that pitch two and oh, Livermore. Let's see if he gets a bit more aggressive. The first throw to first, a little bit closer than the second. Remember, Matt Wood is a catcher. Four for 19, catching runner stealing. Not great, not, well, pretty bad, really. Not where he wants to be. Bunt attempt pulled inside. Santini's getting the troops fired up. I think that was a fake bunt all the way, too. I think that was a, that was a yep. showing bunt to try to throw the pitcher off situation. I don't think he's going to lay one down 2-0. And certainly, and I like this from Matt Wood, go out, calm your pitcher down, make him take a breath here. Yep. Um, Space pulls it in, and there's the strike. We just saw a shot of Jacob Sharm warming up in the pen for Northwestern. Would likely come in should this game go to extras. Nittany just Lions. caught the inside corner. It, it sure did. Nittany Lions hoping it goes to extras. Malat up until this at bat. I mean, the prior little more is a good shot up the middle. Pulls back, thought about the same thing. So a lot of. Uh, a lot of chicanery there. Good word, good word. But here's an interesting spot for Santini, right? 3-2 count. He's a guy who strikes out plenty. 20 Ks on the season in only 52 at-bats. He's got to get the bat on the ball. And doesn't there. 
pump fake to first base. And Santini from a 3-0 count with three straight dimes from Malat. Doubles on the season for the sophomore. And it's gonna be a grounder to Cease, Cease to Spiegel. And just like that, Noah, we got extra innings. Yeah, I'm excited. He's finding himself at the plate, I am sure the Nittany Lions would love for him to come through here. He has a good shot, nice Dave. Livermore over to Calarco. How about this Northwestern infield defense, P? Making plays all over the place. Livermore had a couple earlier, uh, yesterday as well. And that's just an outstanding snag. For a second, I was about to say, well, Gerlachis has a flair for the dramatic, apparently. Yeah. But Livermore even more so. Excellent well, play. Yeah, it takes a certain type of DNA to be able to come through in the clutch and not just uh, wither away. And he showed it yesterday, so I, I wasn't, uh, wasn't going to question if he came through again today as Derek Cease is up. The battle of the second baseman slash right-handed pitchers. Correct. Yeah, you talked about, and for those of you just joining us now, bonus baseball. Cease 160 was warming up in the bullpen about an hour ago, and now is at the plate and fouls one to right. And remember, Bashirs is due up second next inning in the bottom of the 10th, and you better believe he's hitting for himself. So oh, absolutely. He has the chance to earn his own win in a way that pitchers rarely do. A Gotta Shohei Otani style double win where he pitches the top of the 10th <laughs> and then seals it in the bottom with a hit. Sees so fouls it away, same spot. It's one of the great things about college baseball, especially that of the Big Ten. Great hitting, great pitching. And just enough two way players. You know, there's a couple of them. Bashirs and Cease not alone. Cease standing 5 8. Watches that one go outside. One and two. Extra innings. Both teams, six hits. Both teams, two runs. As evenly matched a game as you're going to see this season in the Big Ten. Inside. Scooching out of the way is Cease. One funny little thing. Bashirs has his card on his belt like a position player would, yeah. and not on his arm like most pitchers do. I wonder, it's, it's sort of unique. He's looking down at his belt <laughs> sure to is. look at the sides. <laughs> Pitch was almost there, no call. That's a tough one. Six Santini pitches. certainly sold it. Yeah, six pitches so far for Bashirs. The tall, slender, second baseman now on the mound for the Cats. And the delivery. Low and inside, and Cease is going to be on with one out. First walk of the season allowed by Bashirs and just two innings of work, but still not a situation where he wanted to allow it with the top of the order due up coming next. Yeah, a little bit mishandle for Jay Harry. Harry the top of the order. One for three on the afternoon with a hit. In your classic J on J matchup here. Always love when you get to say things like that. Lefty on lefty, J on J. And a line shot fair into the right field corner. They're gonna send them, nope, they're gonna change their mind. They learned their lesson after the last right. time. And they hold Cease at third, one out runners in scoring position at second. And third, the Nittley Lions threatening with one out in the 10th. And this is a good hold. It's close. It's close. I think there's a chance that Cease makes it in. But Northwestern's relay was on target. And a good throw at home gets Cease relatively easily. You have the middle of your order coming up. You don't need to run yourself out of an inning. Excellent piece of hitting, by the way, by Jay Harry. Just letting the hands flow. Becoming the first player in this game to get two hits. And you can see C steaming around third. Yep. But held up. At the dish. One and four for the afternoon single flyout striker. Strikeout for Johnny Piacentino. Infield in at all four positions for Northwestern. Outfield also relatively in for a pretty good hitter in Piacentino. Trying to prevent a run from scoring. Top of the 10th. Tall stance for Johnny. 
inside fall. And we all know who's waiting on deck by now. The specter of wood in the on-deck circle looms large. This is not a place where you want to fall too far behind. Correct, and you don't want a necessarily intentional walk. Well, you would love Pia to get the Santino chance to intentionally well. walk wood, but you got to get Pia oh, Santino sure, out that, that, first. That yeah. point, exactly. With runners at second and third, there is one thing to worry about, and that is the hitter at home plate. If you are a fan of Penn State, one good swing of the bat could break this open with two runs to score. Top of the 10th, Bashir's at the mound. After a walk and a double. And that is going to right field. Will it be enough? Let's see if they do. They send, and that should be, oh! He's saying he's out! My goodness, a double play! What a dime from right field! Pinkston My with a laser. Goodness. That is a laser from Andrew Pinkston in right. I don't know how he makes this throw. Sending Cease all the way here, and Pinkston lines it up beautifully, puts it right on the money, and they say the tag is applied. It's tough to see on that angle, but it looks like Santini does get the back of Cease. Let's see if we have it from this angle. Outstanding camera work by the Big Ten Plus crew as he's coming around, and let's see if he gets them. And he does. Yeah, great call. He gets the back right there at the top of the back. He gets the back on the, on the swipe tag. In between the one and the nine, Noah. Excellent work by both Santini and Pinkston. That is a sensational throw from Pinkston and, and right. Off. Strong stroke to left field. That'll stay fair. Roundy second is Bashirs. He'll have a stand up double with one out in the bottom of the 10th for the Wildcats. Pitch is shut down, I think, at the top of the 10th. And Come up and hit him. Nittany Lions trying to find a way with Malat still on the mound from the stretch. Inside to take the Cats. Rustich waiting on deck. And Pinkston, the hero from the top of the inning, in the hole. Two, think about this, two beautiful throw outs at home from left and right field in almost as in as many innings, Noah. Yeah, from, from the two guys who are coming Correct. up next. Yeah. Now, I will say, not that Rustich didn't make a wonderful throw, but his was a much lower degree of difficulty yeah. than Pinkston's, who really had to put it exactly on the money. Rustich had a much bigger margin for error, although he did deliver a beautiful dive. Herrera, check swing, that'll go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my goodness, when we when we talk about what Pinkston was able to do, I mean, there was no margin of error. Yeah, and, and he threw it, he, it was a missile, and it was right on the money. Herrera swings through. Pat Herrera, number seven. Knee high socks, socks black batting gloves. White cleats, hoping to come away with a victory. Outside, good take. 39 pitches for him a lot, Noah, but yeah. he, can, he can get that number up and Penn State's not worried about it. Absolutely. They're running him until he's empty right now. And a walk for Herrera. It's gonna be tough for them to throw out Bashirs on a single. Rustich, number 13. The righty pulls it! Going, going, going! Gone! Ain't no grave can hold my body down! Steven Rustich, the throw out to keep Northwestern alive, and the walk off three run! Bomb! Bang! Northwestern wins! Pour the Gatorade! Noah, what a game! Unbelievable scenes here at Miller Park. Steven Rustich jumps on a first pitch right in his wheelhouse and just gets every bit of it. We mentioned his home run hitting prowess, fourth of the year in limited playing time. This man hits him with the best of them, and he was running hard out to first, but that thing cleared the, the hill behind the left field fence. The only question was whether it would stay fair. It did, and Northwestern 
wins their second consecutive series to start Big Ten play in dramatic fashion.